So this is your reflective light sensor, and it's been mounted on a little 3D printed bracket, so that's that U-shaped black thing. And the bracket is just to make sure that your sensor is always a set distance above the surface. So that will stay the same, and you can slide it back and forth. That allows you to, for example, put it on different surfaces and test how much light is being reflected from each one. You do need to plug in this ribbon cable, and that means you need to look very carefully at the little red circuit board because it does tell you on there which of the pins is supposed to be ground and which of them is supposed to be out. So just make sure that the ground pin gets connected to the black wire and the out pin gets connected to the yellow wire. The other end of your ribbon cable is going to get plugged in to your breadboard, so you can put it just in any open area. The red and the black wire do need to go to 5 volts and ground. We're going to need to connect a few things to this yellow wire, and the first of them is a capacitor. So that gets connected between the yellow line and ground. So I'm going to do that in the back. And the next thing we want to connect is a buffer resistor. So that also goes between the yellow line. And we're going to connect that to pin RD4 on our microchip. And then we've got one more thing to connect, and that is a direct line from this yellow wire over to pin RB0 on the microchip. So several things get connected to that yellow wire, which is the out pin. So let me explain a little bit about how the circuit works. You've been given some code, and you will have to fiddle with it a little bit, but it should basically work out of the box. And one thing you'll notice that it does is it's going to take pin RD4, and it's going to set it to be an input, and then to an output, and then to an input, and then to an output. So it swaps it back and forth. Why is it doing that? Well, when it's set to be an output, it'll be putting out a high signal. That's going to charge up the capacitor. When we then switch it to an input, effectively we've disconnected it from the circuit because no current can flow into an input. So then the capacitor is going to start to discharge, and the only place it can discharge is through the reflective light sensor. So through the yellow wire and then out through the black wire to ground. So we're using pin RD4 to charge up the capacitor and then to allow it to discharge later. We're also going to be looking at that discharge via the ADCC pin. In part B, you're going to be putting your sensor over top of the white, the black, and the gray squares and seeing how fast the capacitor discharges. So you'll end up with graphs that kind of look like this. Now remember that the capacitor is discharging through the reflective light sensor, and its resistance depends on how much light is being reflected back on it. So for example, in the case of the black square, there's not much light being reflected back onto the sensor, Therefore, its inner resistance is high, and the capacitor discharges slowly. So that's this top line here. In the case of the white square, there's a lot of light being reflected back onto the sensor, so its inner resistance is fairly low, and that means that the capacitor discharges quite quickly. So that's this line here, and then the gray square gave you this line in the middle. Now these graphs are basically linear and you will want the slope of them, because one of the things you're asked to do is to say how much current got sunk through the photoresistor. And to do that, you need the derivative of the voltage change, and ooh, what's the derivative of a linear graph? Well, it's just the slope. So as I said, you'll want the slope of these. You will need to know what the voltage is, so on my y-axis I've just plotted the raw ADC values. They all start at the same point because the capacitor charged up to 5 volts. So the highest value is 5 volts, the lowest value is 0 volts, and therefore you can convert between your raw ADC value and the voltage. You'll also want to calculate your times, and to do that, I'd note that one of the things that the program gives you is the total counts that the timer counted off while you were taking data. And you took 25 points of data, so you take this value, the counts, divide by 25, and then multiply by the time and interval that that is supposed to represent based on how fast your chip is going and what your prescale value was. That's most of what you need to do for part B. One thing you'll need to do for part C, however, is you want to pick a time when you can tell based on how much the capacitor has discharged whether you were over top of a white square or a black square or a gray square. So what I mean is at zero, all three graphs have the same value because the capacitor started at five volts for all three of them. So you want to wait some time after that so that you can tell the difference between being on top of a white square or being on top of a black square. 
And you'll get the most accurate results if you choose a point where these three graphs are as diverged as possible. So that's basically right here, just before the white graph has bottomed out. And then you'll use this time in part C.